Thousands in Wisconsin still wait for unemployment benefits. No one injured in town of Linden house fire. 52 county dairy farms helped by special fund. These and other local stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, the service of WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Tuesday, May 26, 2020. Memorial Day 2020 took on its own special feel this time around, as many made the most of warm, dry weather to come out from isolation into celebration of those who were once among us and whose memory we honor on Memorial Day. Because of the coronavirus pandemic, parades and large organized community events were canceled, while small ceremonies honoring veterans were held at various cemeteries around the country, and picnics, if properly planned for conditions of a pandemic, were small and among close family members. Others have chosen to forego widely followed precautions and instead held larger gatherings. Meanwhile, the coronavirus responsible for COVID-19 marched on without regard to the holiday. In Sheboygan County, no new cases have been recorded since Saturday, and active cases remain at 14. There are no hospitalizations due to coronavirus here, and 107 persons tested negative in the last 24 hours. Wisconsin tested 7,480 persons since Saturday, and 307, or 4.1%, were positive for COVID-19. That positive percentage is now on its way in to its second consecutive day of decline, but not yet strong enough to establish a 14-day downward trend. Four more persons have died from the coronavirus within the state boundaries, and details of mass community testing planned for this coming Thursday through Saturday remain unreleased as of this Monday afternoon. However, it is known that the event will be operated by the Wisconsin National Guard at the Sheboygan County Fairgrounds. No appointment will be needed for the free through, drive through process and up to 400 tests per day will be done on those five and older. Minors must be accompanied by a parent or guardian and tests are reserved for those showing symptoms consistent with COVID-19. More than half a dozen fire departments were called out on Monday evening when the house fire was reported in the town of Linden. The Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department says it happened around 7.30 at home on County Road F. The homeowner called 911 to report an electrical fire in the basement of the home. When deputies arrived, there was smoke coming out from the basement and crews were able to put the fire out. The extent of the damage is not known and no one was injured. Habitat for Humanity Lakeside Sheboygan Restore will open its doors at 11 a.m. tomorrow following a nine-week closure forced by the COVID-19 pandemic. Executive Director Sarah Beckman said that both shopping and donation drop-offs will look and feel different after the deep cleaning of, of stock and store reconfiguration uh, to ensure a clean and safe shopping experience for everyone. New hours will be from 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. on Wednesday through Friday and on Saturdays from 9 until 2. Social distancing signage, a checkout sneeze guard, and hourly cleaning of the bathrooms and high touch services are now part of the norm here and any merchandise donated will be disinfected and placed in quarantine for three to five days before being placed for sale. 52 Sheboygan County dairy farmers have been tossed a lifeline to help weather the storm of COVID-19 amid the already unsteady climate. Of the, the Sheboygan County Dairy Farmer Fund is administered by Cus Consumer Credit Counseling Services and made possible by a local family foundation, Bank First, and individuals. 
Consumer Credit Counseling Service of Sheboygan Executive Director Wayne Greisbach said he was overjoyed that so many were assisted and were able to review their budget with the agency. Over $275,000 was distributed to eligible farmers. And Greisbach said that given the need, he would like to see the fund continue. Agriculture in Sheboygan County alone employs more than 8,600 persons, accounts for over $3 billion in economic activity, and contributes almost $740 million to the county's total income. The Department of Workforce Development says they are working to untangle the backlog of unemployment claims there are thousands of recently fired workers who are still waiting for benefits, and DWD staff said they are working to catch up with the needs of residents. Chief Economi Economist Dennis Winters says DWD is doing its best that they can right now, and that they are already scaling up their service. We are doing everything that's possible, handling millions of phone calls and hundreds of thousands of claims on systems that was not prepared for the manner of how sudden that this all happened. Winters says the state's unemployment system has been overloaded for weeks. We are doing everything we can to ramp up this on that side. For those that are having difficulty, we apologize, but the vast majority are being held, handled as well as we can and all of them are being handled as well as we can given the circumstances. At 14.1% unemployment, Wisconsin still has lower unemployment rates than the national average, 439,000 er, people in Wisconsin lost a job in April. And finally, foul play is not suspected in the death of a lacrosse man who has been missing since February. Police confirmed on Sunday that they found the body of 62-year-old James Zaragoza in the Mississippi River near Hanfill Road. Zaragoza went missing on February 22nd at the Catholic Charities Warming Center, and an autopsy is being conducted before authorities make an official cause of death determination. And that is our report for today. Join me again on Thursday for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.